Hello. Hi. Hey guys. Hi, Frederick. Hello. I'm guessing uh, people had trouble getting into the uh, into the other Zoom link that uh, Ed posted. I know I, I had trouble getting into the meeting. It said another one was in progress, so he he might be in. He might be waiting for that one though. I'll ping him on Slack. Yeah, this one was started. Uh, I've not found the other one actually. Ah, I got a message earlier this morning that Ed is not feeling well, so um, I can take over then. Okay, let's get started. Um, is there anyone who wants to re um, talk about what they've um, been working on for the past week? Yeah, uh, I think I can start. Uh, let me try to share my screen just a second. Do you see my screen? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, uh, last week uh, and now I'm working on updates for the metrics. So the general idea is to move from the uh, cross-connect metrics we have and from the cross-connect API to have a, just a pure connection monitor and the events uh, working. Uh, just with our unified uh, request calls and monitor connections uh, methodology. So the idea is to add uh, let me show in a proto booth. Right now in the connection we have a pass uh, of uh, uh, it? yeah of uh, segments. So every segment has tokens and so on. So general idea is to have a uh, same way metrics and the metric segment. So uh, for a connection object, we will have uh, all uh, possible metrics to be available uh, in periodic update or by request update. Uh, and to uh, just one problem with it, it could be a lot of metrics from endpoints. And uh, to solve this, uh, additional context, metrics context should be introduced to pass the interval parameter to not uh, send uh, updates too often to the client. So if the client do a request, it will receive all the metrics, uh, combine it from all the endpoints, but if we just a forwarder, we'll send periodic uh, metrics update. Uh, it will send uh, just not so often. So if someone would like to comment, uh, just welcome uh, with the API changes and it will be pull requests in SDK. Uh, I think also two pull requests to SDK to uh, just fix the current metrics chain and to introduce, uh, uh, to fix the monitoring chain and to fix the metrics chain. Uh, fix for the monitor is here. Uh, and today I will add a pull request with the metrics. Okay, nice. So, so from my side. Guys, uh, as I know uh, from uh, Artyom is working on the WireGuard stuff, he will not be able to join today and has uh, hands on pulls uh, with the WireGuard community and implementation and the new SDK and the current uh, network service mesh uh, main repo. 
yeah, he, he got a hold of me and uh, mentioned that he was looking at or that he was using uh, the WireGuard Go implementation. And um, I believe he should be working on, as you described, moving it from the main network service mesh to the SDK. So that's, yep. that's all good. Cool. Is there, um, 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 who, who's next? Who, who would like to talk about what, they're, uh, what they've been working on? I can say what I'm doing now. Oh, this is Ilya. Uh, currently, I'm working on the PR to SDK. I don't know, uh, should I share the screen or it's okay. Uh, there's PR that covers healing element, chain element with tests, unit tests. And there are lots of discussions with Ed about um, the way how we should test that element. So at first I made kind of uh, white box testing, so I uh, using a lot of uh, checking private maps, but uh, we decided that uh, it's better to do tests in another package. I mean, in a test package. So I change it, and now we have discussions with Ed how to properly um, dispose resources. Uh, there were finalizer, but uh, it doesn't work well in test environment. I mean, you see the ugly output. I mean, the line pass, and after the line pass, the, there are some still some output because finalizer works later, so it's not really good. And I proposed a couple ideas. I think we'll discuss that ideas in terms of that PR. And I also have uh, some work done uh, for Spire Federation. They work quite good in my local kind environment. And I have plans to uh, provide PR for CI. I mean, interdomain tests probably should use federations instead of a common root certificate. And that's all for me, I guess. Okay, fantastic. Are you uh, currently blocked on anything or do you have uh, do you have enough that you can continue working at the moment without any problems? Oh, no, I'm not uh, blocking. I also, uh, um, beside the PR for healing, I also play with SDK and create some kind of high level integration tests that use the whole chains. So it's, I, I have uh, things to do. So it's fine. Fantastic. And um, okay, who's next? Uh, I can provide my status. Uh, this is Dennis. Uh, can I share my screen? Uh, please yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, do you, do you see uh, the project board? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, so uh, from my side, uh, I have provided uh, PR into SDK repo. This uh, DNS context stuff for server chain elements, uh, and uh, it uh, has been uh, merged. And I think uh, uh, can I move this uh, into done section? Yeah, if you have a rights, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and, status. and also uh, looks like uh, the another issue um, also has been uh, fixed. Uh, um, oh, this issue uh, has been uh, fixed uh, in another uh, by another issue. Uh, and PR has been merged, and uh, I try to reproduce this, and uh, it it is not uh, reproduced. It is not reproducing with uh, latest master, and I just ask it the reporter about uh, status of this issue, and I think uh, he will close this uh, soon. <laughs> uh, oh. Is this clear? Yeah. Is yeah, uh, sure. more interesting. It's uh, you do have uh, changes in your uh, main repo 
pull request with uh, testing uh, reuse of uh, network service manager pod containers. Oh yes, uh, uh, SDK. Uh, it's more interesting. It's to speed up the test execution and to. Uh, yes, uh, it is an another issue. Uh, but uh, can I uh, uh, describe my status about uh, issue? Ah, for now. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. About for now plugin. Uh, about uh, for now for now plugin. Uh, we have uh, discussed with Ed about uh, moving uh, for now plugin into Cordinus repo to get rid of uh, uh, custom image uh, NSM Cordinus. And uh, today uh, I have provided. Uh, PR and uh, I have created an issue into Cordinus repo. Uh, it uh, has mark uh, IP uh, and I'll work on this. Uh, I just provided some docs and uh, specification. Uh, also, I have provided PR. Uh, oops, uh, it is not PR. <laughs> Oh, here is uh, my PR uh, and it has uh, failed. Uh, I'll take a look. Uh, so uh, here work in progress uh, and uh, I'll wait for uh, feedback from uh, coordinators guys about this plugin and integration. Um, so uh, also uh, I have uh, uh, a progress with uh, another issue. It is uh, issue 2017. It's about uh, adding uh, suits uh, to speed up uh, CI time. And uh, here uh, I have split uh, PR uh, at four parts and on this week, uh, two parts has been merged, and uh, I need to uh, to do only uh, rebase uh, last part and uh, fix some problems uh, uh, with it. And, yes, pretty uh, huge. Well, yes, one comment uh, from I me. Uh, yeah, uh, one comment from me. Um, at the moment, we have integration tests and every test uh, do set up of uh, forwarder, network service manager, all the pods do testing and do shut down after the test is complete. So the general idea for this uh, to have some uh, more uh, configurable way to have some group of tests to reuse the same infrastructure, same forwarders, same network service managers, and uh, it will increase the usage of the uh, forwarder and SM and so on. And we found a uh, few issues which could be found uh, by customers if they start to use NSM with more long uh, running operations and so on. Uh, I have actually uh, also hit something similar in the examples repo where I uh, try to run my nightly builds. Um, like on a single uh, kind cluster and then uh, at some point they start failing like I don't know um, there was some I don't remember what was the error I can I can dig it out so yeah I'll definitely be be, be happy if this uh, if the, this gets forward as obviously up till now we were just uh, you know spinning up environment running a single test and bringing it down and yeah 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 this is not so vanilla yeah a reality <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah, and that's it for us. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, in terms of the core DNS people, um, if you don't hear back from them, uh, let uh, let me and Ed know, and we'll see about uh, uh, pinging them to get some attention on this. Um, okay. Also. Is there, um, I'll ask you the same question, or is there anything that you're blocked on or you need additional direction on? Oh, um, 
it is uh, not blocked. Uh, I just wait for uh, feedback. Okay, you wait cool. for feedback, you block it. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <My> feedback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you, you uh, let me rephrase. Do you, do, you, do you have things that you can work on from uh, at the moment that are they're not blocked? Like, you're, are, are, you, are you in good shape? Yeah, I think, yeah. At least you okay. SPR with the seeds require some work. Okay, thanks. Um, great, is there uh, anyone else who wants to uh, talk about what they've uh, been doing? Alexander, could you tell about uh, Helm 3, version 3? Um, Sorry. Yes, okay, um, I've been busy mostly with the Helm charts uh, recently, and uh, the one of the major task is to to be able to switch to Helm version three, which provides is more robust and if and it uses less infrastructure, like there is no additional tiller code that manages installations. Um, uh, and is basically at the debugging stage. Uh, there is only a couple of tests that uh, that fails on CI and. I will. I hope I will finish the task once I finish the recently emerged task there that with Helm version two, uh, where it turns out that we in docs we should use uh, bare Helm commands to install charts rather than using make targets. So currently I made the PR. Uh, to fix those problems and after the this PR will be merged I will finish the Helm uh, transition to Helm 3. That's basically all. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, let us know if uh, you run into any problems and need, uh, and need help as well uh, and we'll We'll try to do what we can. Sure. Um, so, is there anyone else who wants to uh, talk about stuff that they're currently working on? Okay. Is there anyone who wants to talk? Who wants to ask uh, any other open questions um, about? Uh, things that are going on, directions, or anything like that. Cool. If there's no questions at this particular point, uh, as always, uh, you can find us on the NSM uh, dev channels and ask questions there. Uh, and you can always ping me and, uh, and Nikolai. Um, we're always uh, happy to help. And with that, we will uh, yield back uh, four minutes of time and we'll see most of you in the, uh, in the next meeting in around 10 minutes from now. Thank you. Yep, yep. Bye bye guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.
few moments for people to join in. And as a reminder, this call is recorded. And uh, it will be posted to YouTube uh, after the uh, uh, after the meeting. Um, while we're waiting, can we also get a volunteer to display the agenda, please? Give another minute or so, then we'll get started. If you can add your name to the agenda, uh, that would be uh, uh, very helpful and useful. Um, and if we can get someone to post the link of, to the agenda in the chat, that'd be, uh, that'd be good. Thank you, Ashley. Cool. Let's get uh, let's get started. So, welcome to the uh, to today's network service mesh meeting. And uh, we have this particular meeting, which occurs every Tuesday at eight a.m. Pacific time. We have an issues and PR group, which occurs every seven thirty a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. We are also involved in the CNCF Telecom User Group. Uh, which occurs every first Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific and every third Monday at 3 a.m. Pacific. The next um, um, the, ne the next tug meeting will be uh, 13 days from now at uh, 3 a.m. Pacific. So I think around the 16th or 17th. We also have a uh, CNCF SIG network that we are involved with. And um, that is started up again. Uh, that group meets every first and third Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific. That is interleaved with the Kubernetes SIG uh, network. We are, so events coming up, we have uh, Go San Francisco, where I will be giving a talk on Cloud Native Zero Trust. Uh, there is an MSM component attached into that. So if you're in the San Francisco area, Please come, please come help. Uh, you can also help with uh, providing uh, information to, uh, to others about uh, some of the work that we do as well. We, um, we also are uh, going to participate in KubeCon. The schedules have been announced and there's a diverse uh, set of uh, talks that have been accepted that are related to NSM. And uh, we'll see about getting the agenda um, listed with them. Uh, I think I counted around five or six of them. So it was quite a, quite a healthy number. We have ONES, 
uh, that's up. And I had a brief talk with uh, with um, Arpit, Julie Hall, and uh, and Heather about um, uh, their closing time because their website closed the uh, closed ONES earlier than it should have been closed. So they've extended the uh, time to submit uh, for some unspecified period of time. So if you were intending to submit and forgot or were unable to, please and now's your time to uh, to do so. The schedule will be announced on March 5th. Um, in July, there's going to be KubeCon and CloudNativeCon China. The CFPs close in February 21st, so a few weeks from now. Notifications go out in May. In the end of September will be o ONES Europe, which will be held in Antwerp again. CFPs close in June 7th. They are currently open. And um, finally, we have KubeCon, CrowdNativeCon Boston. The CFPs open in a couple months on April 22nd, and they close in June 12th. So uh, please start thinking about the type of things you would like to see in, in KubeCon Boston. Uh, we also have the NSM Con uh, that is co-located in Amsterdam that should occur, I believe, on March 30th. And so we have a larger room, uh, this time twice the size. Uh, the event page is on the agenda. Uh, the schedules for those will be posted on February 21st, and there are sponsorship slots available. So please consider joining up for a sponsorship and uh, showing your support for NSM if you are in such a position where you can do so. Um, and with that, are there any other events that people would like to announce? Great. Uh, if you can scroll down on the uh, meeting notes and we'll go into the main set of announcements. Okay, so we'll make the announcement again. We have the, a new NSM project page. So this project page crosses, now that we've spanned across multiple repos and coupled with a new addition to GitHub, we can set projects on uh, organizations. So this is an organi organizational level project page that spans multiple projects that helps link to issues and PRs. So uh, if you would like, to help, this is a great place to work out what people are working on, uh, what uh, what's currently available, and uh, also a good opportunity to potentially add your own uh, uh, to add your own ideas ideas in it, into the agenda as well, and to get uh, to get some feedback on it. We have we have the uh, yeah we'll take a quick look. Um, since it's being opened. So here's an example of what it looks like. So you can see there's to do, a variety of in-progress things. And if you see there's, we've even tagged things with a good first issue. So if you're looking to join in, you can, um, you can sort based on the tags. And, uh, and we track things as they, as they move across. Cool. So we can go back to the uh, main agenda, we'll continue on. Uh, so we have the social media community team. So Ashley, you have the floor. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley, and I'll be providing the social media community team updates. And so this last week has brought us, again, some pretty consistent engagement and followings compared to the last few weeks that we have been monitoring this. As far as Twitter goes, we have gained an additional 13 followers. We followed an additional six accounts and we have tweeted and retweeted 27 posts. <clears throat> Some of those include um, KubeCon announcements, so all of the NSM talks that were accepted just the other day. Um, we've tweeted about registering for KubeCon as well as NSMCon, adding that on while everyone is registering for KubeCon Cloud Native Con. Again, getting some um, information out there about the prospectus and trying to get some support through sponsorship. 
And um, again, just reminding people to submit their CFPs. There's also been some general call reminders that have been promoted, some CNCF news about the TOC election guides, about um, Kubernetes surpassing 100,000 registrations and um, promoting CNCF CI working group calls as well as their weekly webinars. So I think with these general tweets getting out there, it is allowing us to gain some additional followers and get some extra eyes on the NSM account. And then just getting some other events out there, CFPs for Open Networking Edge Summit coming up, as well as the GoSF Meetup, Building Cloud Native Zero Trust Solutions. Uh, in addition to that, some general tweets and blog posts from VMware, CNF Testbed, Cisco, and Doc.ai. And as far as LinkedIn goes, again, an additional 10 followers. So that has been very consistent. Um, so good to see that that's all growing. And as far as what we've posted on LinkedIn, pretty much the same as the original tweets that we have been getting out on Twitter. And the plan moving forward is to continue promoting NSMCon um, as far as CFPs, sponsorship, signing up, registering, you name it, um, getting some retweets and contr contributor podcasts out there as those are starting to come out. Any other events that are coming up that are NSM related, we'll just continue to push those to get as, as many eyes on Network Service Mesh as possible. So if there's anything else that comes up, any further announcements, then please do let me know and I'll get those promoted. Fantastic. Thank you very much for, yeah, for the hard work in this area. Cool. Um, a couple other um, minor announcements um, I forgot to, to add in. Um, well, rather one. Um, so I uh, I spoke with uh, with uh, Dan Cohn uh, yesterday, and he asked me to talk at the uh, Linux uh, Foundation event in uh, Mobile World Congress that they're that they're hosting. And so uh, it's it's not going to be NSM specific, but they include a tinge of some stuff that we're doing in NSM in very short context. So uh, if you're going to be in that area, uh, definitely, definitely get a hold of me and find uh, and uh, find me. Um, and with that, um, is there? So we don't have anything on the main agenda today. And uh, just a reminder: some of our best uh, meetings uh, in terms of content have come out of such such events. So it's opportunity. Is there anything that anyone would love to share with the community on or get any feedback on? I have a couple, if I may. I think that we have time for, for everyone. So um, first, I, I just noted like, like while I was browsing here that we, we effectively are covering each and every day with NSM. So we start with NSMCon the whole day. Then, uh, okay, it's not the whole day, but it's um, good enough coverage like, uh, four talks on the first day actually of the of the conference this is kubecon of course and then we have uh, two more on um, april 1st and april 2nd so the last two days so that's 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 actually great i think that that this is the best coverage that we ever got uh, at uh, at kubecon uh, in terms of uh, multitude of um, sessions Okay, uh, well, that's one uh, thing. And then the other thing was something that we discussed uh, this uh, this uh, okay earlier today for me um, on the on the call that is in the you know the Asia call. Uh, so it was something regarding the repo split. Uh, I would just like to reopen. Let me just copy this presentation link here for a second. Um, so uh, the discussion was something along the lines of uh, like, how are we proceeding with this? I mean, what's actually going on there? Uh, I'm, what am I missing here? Let's say that this is uh, 
based on um, it. Um, so um, it's more or less uh, something that I think that we as a community need to to try to figure out. So the the final target of the repo pipelining that is go ongoing now is to get into situation something like this. Similarly, the problem that I see and we kind of discussed with Andre uh, quickly was that we 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 see that there are a lot of PRs and issues which are still filed and especially you know kind kind of huge big uh, new functionalities being filed against the main monolithic repo as we call it like um, um, you know the network service mesh one and we want to get into something that is going to evolve from from these experiments here so <clears throat> I think that maybe we should kind of uh, I don't know what's the right word in here or what exactly techniques we should use, but kind of uh, stimulate the people, the stimulate like the contributors uh, and new committers to actually go directly to the new structure and try to propose their new functionalities there and keep this one uh, in kind of semi maintenance mode for, uh, for now. Um, if you see what I mean, or some variations of of these um, of these uh, things. I mean, I don't want to go into extremes. Like we don't get any PRs in network service mesh. I don't think don't think that that's possible and meaningful now. But um, or maybe we can decide on some steps. Like today we are going for simple API plus several SDKs split. So exactly this one. And uh, until we get done here, anything that touches SDK or API here is not getting merged so that we can make a clean, you know, implementation here and we merge everything because functionality from here to here. And then once we make network service mesh actually use these SDKs, I refer to them, uh, then we can start migrating as a second step, step uh, like the CMDs and still keep the main uh, repo as kind of integration one and then eventually at some point uh, when everything else works we start moving to helms and then you know all the integrations like the final picture <clears throat> so these are just just some, some thoughts and i would like to get some kind of i don't know discussion or uh, share ideas and to try to decide on what the our generic approach uh, would be here yeah, that's, that's a problem that uh, I, I know that Ed ran into when he was working on some of this stuff. Is like, get enough there and get it stabilized uh, so that we can proceed with the, ne the next set of, uh, of steps because changes to that API repo absolutely ripple through the rest of the, through the, rest of the system as opposed to something like SDK EPA agent, which um, has less, uh, less dependencies. So I think um, I, I, I would prefer to, to have most of the effort put into the, into the first few until, until they're up in, and in a good shape. Um, but I, I think they're starting to, uh, to approach that. Like the next big step that needs to get out there is, is the uh, commands repo. Um, and I know Ed was working to try to get the commands repo structure out sometime this week so that we can finally complete that particular loop. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know an easy way to, uh, to solve that uh, other than uh, like trying to front load as much of the, of the work as, uh, as possible. Um, are people, were, were people having problems uh, with uh, the new SDK? Like were they, were they just uh, hesitant to use it, but will be okay using it later, or were they actively trying to build things on it uh, right now? I don't know. It's not not fully ready yet, so <laughs> it's an active uh, development, <coughs> an active move of the components from the monolithic repo into it. Uh, at the moment, uh, we do some experiments, like we are creating the endpoints based on a new SDK. Uh, so 
at least one week or a bit more may be required to have it more stable and to uh, make first steps to move uh, current uh, applications to use the new SDK. Uh, okay, so yeah, that makes... Yeah. Sorry, go on, Nikolai. I, I was just going to say that uh, for the time being, uh, examples are like uh, CI, for example, so it's broken because of some um, kind of misunderstandings with how we use uh, Helm charts, but that's going to be fixed. Uh, and uh, I was thinking maybe maybe we can create a PR where a migration to use this new SDK uh, can be used there. I mean, there, there are not nightly builds there. So I don't know if we, if we start migrating uh, at least some of the examples to the new SDK, maybe this could be a good, good kind of, um, I don't know where to way to 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 start uh, using it in a way. So examples will be moved to SDK or to CMD. No, no, no. I mean, uh, okay. Examples are staying as a repo for now as they are. That's. I, think, I mean, uh, these uh, examples which are actually in monolithic repository. No, I'm no, talking no. about these ones. Yeah. So based on the current state, uh, some parts like endpoints could be already started to be implemented using the new SDK, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but the NSM manager itself uh, could not yet be replaced with the components from the new SDK, since not all chain elements required are uh, already implemented. So mm -hmm. the major change uh, for the new SDK it's to move from the forwarder as a separate uh, component of a system mm -hmm. to a forwarder as an endpoint. And this part of work is not yet finished. So yeah. it's, it's a major change. It's uh, a huge change, yeah. 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 Oh. But this means that, 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 that it's mostly the forwarder that cannot be, like the two forwarders that we have today that cannot be migrated, like. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you say, I I was mostly expecting that I should just change uh, like the, uh, the the go imports that I do um, to just point to this repo instead of the network service mesh one. Uh, or are do, do, do are you saying that there are other changes there? There are so uh, incompatible changes between the repositories. This okay. For example, what I introduced as uh, renaming uh, initialisms. Yeah, of course. Well, that's... Um... So, so only change for imports will be not enough. Some little patching probably will be needed. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's okay. I mean, like, that's not... So one, one of the things that, that actually was done back at the time when the SDK was created was that we had this, you know, Huge, okay, a huge compared to other parts of the of the code. Explanations of what actually the NSM is about, you know, with all the components that we have here. I guess that this is also planned to be migrated and to kind of reflect the uh, reality of the new. Uh, I guess like changing at least these bits here so that uh, people can just use it. Um, kind of safely yeah yeah i think yeah okay. it shall be done yeah okay and it will be done oh, yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah initialism check okay yeah that was my my kind of um something that that we wanted to to bring up uh today and um yeah, because uh, for example, the the, the wire guard stuff, I think that that it touches uh, pieces at least in the API, maybe. Oh. Meaning that if we have to merge it, then we we'll have to forward port to uh, to the new structure. Um, I know. Uh... Artyom already provided a pull request for the wire guard to the new SDK. 
Oh, okay. Oh. So probably it's not so complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not complicated. Uh, what's complicated is to track if you if you have more than ten of these. Then yeah, yeah. So that in this case, yeah. <laughs> having to track them, then it's this is complicated. It's not that we cannot copy files. Okay. Uh, what else do we want to to talk about? Oh, hello, guys. Uh, are, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, yes, we can. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, this is Alex from Red Hat. Um, I've been talking with, with Ed and, and Frederick uh, on Slack about the NSM operator. So uh, I'm about, it's working right now. If you, if you try to install, it's pretty rough, but there is uh, enough instruction there on, on the repo to try installing NSM using uh, the operator, but only on a vanilla Kubernetes uh, for the moment. Okay. But I'm almost in the point where I would be able to deploy an OpenShift 2 and using what we call Operator Lifecycle Manager, which is a tool that integrates uh, multiple operators and calculates dependencies and, and all of that. Um, and I, I feel that at some point in time, uh, we'll need to have a discussion around two, uh, two topics on, on the operator, which are the specs and the status fields uh, on the CR. So what would you guys, um, what, what would you want to see uh, on, on the configuration of this uh, virtual object called NSM inside Kubernetes and what would you like to see in this status field? So these two would be topics for probably, I, I think it would be, it would take some time. It, it won't be like something decided uh, at once, but probably it will need some engineering uh, on that. And of course, uh, you know way more about uh, the inner things, the, the under the hood things and NSM to, to understand and to choose what is, what is best for that. For now, if, if you look at the CR on, on uh, the repo, uh, you see that uh, it is basically a copy. Uh, how how can I find the, 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 the CR? Sorry, if you can just share the link so that we can open uh, it. And right see. now, I, may, may I put it on the agenda here? Uh, yes, of course, please, please. Yeah, yeah. please do. And uh, also, uh, not everyone here will know what an operator is. So if you could also describe what an operator is for others, that'd be fantastic. Okay, uh, if you want, I can show it working uh, yes. really quick. Uh, yeah, go for it. We'd just, love to see it. Yeah, let me just uh, find the link here. Um, okay, the link is here. Okay, so let me put it here. Uh, uh, there we go. So you have the link there. It is on my own uh, GitHub account, but um, you, I, I, I'm aiming actually to transfer whatever you have here to the, and, and the Net Network Service Mesh GitHub account. So let's, um, can you see my screen now? Uh, yes. Okay. So you have a you have a terminal on the left side, right, and and. VS code on the right side. Okay, is it is it possible to read or is it too small? How to, can you read that? Fine for me. Okay, okay. So uh, basically, what I what I did it I, I put all the if if I let me take a look on the repo first. I, I think it will be better if you want to take a look. Let me see if I can. Can you see uh, the repo here? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, okay. So uh, I put some requirements here that if if we go there, mm -hmm. this is these are basically uh, the objects that oh. the, the dependencies for NSM to be installed, right? So if I if I put those guys before and then I put Spire as a Helm chart uh, before uh, we are covered to install the operator, right? So after, after doing that, I'm just uh, cloning 
the project to get the deployments for the CRD and the, the operator resources. So the CRD must be there before the, the operator, all right? And after deploying the operator, I can deploy a CR, and I will explain that uh, real quick, uh, looking at here. So the operator basically is a deployment that takes care of your installation, can takes care uh, uh, on uh, of uh, the health uh, of everything that we're trying to, to run on, on top of your Kubernetes cluster. So uh, for that, I mean every single component in the NSM uh, uh, charts that we see on the Helm charts can be deployed uh, by the operator and taken care uh, by the operator, right? So uh, the operator resources is a YAML file that is uh, right here. If you see everything that is needed to deploy the operator is here. So accounts, uh, roles and everything. So it's just to speed up the process. Um, instead of deleting that, let me just apply this guy. So if I apply, it will create a container here. Uh, that is a de the, the deployment actually will, will create a container here that is the operator. The operator holds uh, within it some controllers that will be watching the behavior for each and every component uh, on the NSM, uh, let's say application as a whole, as a system, right? So it will be watching um, the admission webhook deployment, it will be watching the daemon sets for the forwarder and also for the network service manager, right? Since I don't have uh, anything, any CRs here, I'm doing uh, underneath here a kubectl get NSM because I created that CRD to represent the system, right? But I don't have anything here. I have a CR though that is actually representing NSM here. Uh, with the same options that you guys um, put on on the Helm charts. So here I'm basically, give it or take, copying the same thing that is there, right? So if I deploy this CR, um, let me see if I can find it on my history here, yes. So if I deploy the CR, it's gonna create everything. It should create everything. So now I have an NSM object here. It's beginning to download all the components and uh, sometime at some point it will complete uh, all the containers and it will put the platform running everything. Uh, almost there, so there we go. Everything is here and you can see that it creates the services here. Um, it creates, uh, the, the, the deployments and the demo sets as well. And you, if, you, if you look before deploying, uh, NSM operator metrics was already there because it's, it's been developed with the uh, operator SDK and it comes with uh, a metrics endpoint uh, embedded, which uh, kind of facilitates the process of publishing metrics. So this is the work of the operator, is to take care of it. So it can be extremely flexible because everything is Golang. Uh, we just have a boilerplate from the operator SDK to build everything, uh, at least the, the, the exkeleton project. And we can concentrate on the controllers, on the logic uh, inside uh, of the controllers. So this is the point where I, I, I say that uh, here, many decisions uh, have, have to, to, be, to be made because uh, if you want a, a complex system, if you want to change uh, configurations, you can do anything. You can view this spec field the way you want. Like if we can even have nested objects and uh, whatever, whatever is needed, uh, it's possible to be done, right? Um, and the same way, this this status this status fields we don't have a status field. So if I if I come here, let me uh, visualize here, like. If I do kget, uh, kubectl get in the same, I have the NSM object. And if I want to describe it, describe NSM, NSM, uh, we have a spec field, but we don't have the status field. The status or status, I, I don't know how to pronounce it well, but status field would be the one uh, representing everything you want uh, in terms of uh, the components. If they are 
uh, running, installing, creating, what, what kind of phases they are passing through and things like that. So it is, uh, uh, those decisions are way more uh, easily taken or made if, if you guys, uh, if, you, if, you, if we have somebody that actually knows uh, the roadmap for the project. You know? So what, what do you guys envision in the future for NSM and what uh, we can do uh, from, from a coding perspective to make that happen uh, from a central point such as an operator. And the good thing on the operator is that if you, if you install, if you have a cluster with the operator lifecycle manager, then I can actually build a small Helm operator, for example, for Aspire. Uh, Jagger Tracing actually has already an operator, so I can just point out those dependencies and then uh, the operator lifecycle manager will bring those operators in in order to comply with the requirements uh, to install uh, the NSM operator. So it seems to be uh, interesting and it, it can go way further than uh, Helm charts because Helm charts, uh, on Helm charts you, you, you can version, you can group everything together, you can install it easier, e easily and, and you can also uh, upgrade. But when it comes to like, if you need to backup configurations, if you need to, I don't know, just uh, grab some information and speed it out on an S3 bucket, or if you want to do some sort of uh, stateful uh, database to to keep some information and and make sure that database is backed up, for example, or if you want to do I don't know billing on on a cloud provider and you want a part of this operator to actually. Uh, build reports for you based on the cloud provider API. So uh, the possibilities are are really really uh, wild. Like you, you you can you can bring in the metrics, but also process the metrics uh, outside uh, with the help of the operator and and have deep insights. You can go further and do autopilot if you have some sort of behavior that you 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 can see. On, uh, on clients uh, using NSM and something is happening. Okay, we need to check that and to fix that, we need to change some configuration or to tune, how to tune something on, on the application or even restart a pod or something like that. It is possible using the operator because it's always alive watching the resources and it can have many conditions inside to say, oh, okay, if this component is going to that state, I can change like that go to that state, I can change like that. So it's, it's more or less how the operator works. Uh, I, I hope, uh, I hope it's, it's enough to explain what it is. Uh, I don't know if somebody has uh, any questions. So is there a um, possibility to dynamically change, for example, tag for a whole deployment? Uh, sorry to change. Um, tag, uh, I mean for um, Docker images. So operator would uh, update uh, all deployments, uh, replica sets, and so on. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. You 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 mean like bringing new images? Uh, Is that it? Exactly. So if I will update CR with changing the tag to newer version, uh, I expect that it will. Uh, operator will automatically do the upgrade. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, one one of our of our goals is to have the operator doing seamless up, upgrades and downgrades as well. So, if you uh, there are, there are some, there are a few ways to do that. You can you can um, tie uh, the operator to a particular uh, uh, image. So let's say that you have a tag on the operator. And that tag represents uh, certain images on, on your CR. So then the operator will deploy just one version of NSM. And then to the next version, you create a new tag on the operator and you tie the, the whole NSM version to that new operator. And when you say, hey, I want to upgrade my operator, the operator itself will upgrade the whole application. So this is one way of doing that. We actually prefer not to put uh, the image itself as uh, uh, as we are doing here on, on 
like registry, org, and tag, instead of doing that, we could tie everything to a particular version of the operator and not open this on the configuration side. And then when, it, when you update the operator, you update the whole application. And if some, something goes wrong, you can do the opposite. You can downgrade it and make it, do, uh, make it downgrade everything gracefully as well. So that's uh, actually temporary part. Am I understanding them correctly? Uh, sorry? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. This, this, you mean this configuration here? Yeah. Yeah, this, I, I just, what I did, I translated uh, the Helm uh, charts that I, yeah, I found. I yeah, that's it. So for, from here, we need to think, okay, what do we want to see uh, happening? Uh, on the operator. I can hide this easily. I can hide this and say, okay, I have a particular version for that uh, uh, operator. The thing is, is, that I, is that I don't have yet a release on the operator. That's, that's what I'm working on right now because I need to build a file. I actually already built, I, I'm just testing and at, at the end of testing, uh, which is called cluster service version. That file is important because that file is uh, we have all the metadata that describes the operator, what, what it can do, uh, fields that it can show on, on, for example, OpenShift UI and everything else. And uh, with, with that file, I can version the operator. So uh, once I have that file ready, I can put a release out and then I may, for example, hide this and tie uh, the operator to a particular NSM version. Cool. So um, I guess a little bit of feedback in this direction is, um, so we're, we're going to have to find a, a good balance in this area because one of the things with NSM is it's designed to, to work uh, not only with Kubernetes, but things outside of Kubernetes as well. So that means uh, some of the uh, healing and, uh, and so on that you would tend to drive through an operator, we're going to have to make sure that those work uh, in when you're trying to drive like a, a hardware switch or a top of rack switch or uh, OpenStack or so on. That, that being said, I think that there might, there, there may be a good opportunity for, uh, for this particular project to keep track of certain types of metrics or keep track of certain types of things that have been exposed to try to work out like if there's an error condition that we can detect or we see that the service has stopped responding or, or so on. Uh, that that gets uh, mitigated properly, or to help us with uh, with an upgrade path where we want to perform an upgrade. And yes, we technically could just do a big bang Helm style, go upgrade everything. But this would uh, it also gives the opportunity to do something that's a little bit more, a little bit more controlled, a little bit less uh, 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 invasive, I guess you could say. Um, and so I, I can definitely see a variety of really good. Uh, of, of, of really good integrations that we can do with this. Um, another question as well, and you don't have to answer this, but is this something you would consider having within the, uh, the network service mesh repo itself as a, as a sub repo of the organization? Yes, yes, totally. To, to be honest, my, my goal at Red Hat is to spread operators everywhere. So, uh, for us, this is important. So what I'm trying to do is bootstrap the community around this operator. So if you guys uh, want to have this under under the network self smash, to me is the best place to be. Cool. Well, let me get back to you shortly on that. But I think that that's a really a really good idea, and I think that that's the right place for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. Uh, to me, it would be really cool to have a, under the network self smash, and I would be super open to help anyone that wants to contribute on that. Fantastic. And uh, one other question, not like not entirely related, but still within the realm of based on what you described. Um, so did you have any trouble running it in, uh, in OpenShift or did it just, uh, did it just work? Yeah, the, yeah, actually no, uh, it doesn't work right away because uh, OpenShift works with 
what we call security uh, context constraints and those uh, that we call SECs, they have very, uh, very specific rules on uh, security technologies under the hood, me meaning App Armor, SE Linux, uh, a bunch of things underneath. And there's one in particular, which is the, the user ID that OpenShift changes um, by default if you try to run on OpenShift. So if I, if I configure the, the user ID to be any user ID, I can run, uh, I can run uh, OK with no problem. So now I'm trying to integrate into OpenShift and put it uh, straight uh, into, the, into the embedded operator hub. And then uh, once it is there, okay, it's working, then I can try to push uh, the CSV file that one I mentioned to the community uh, upstream operators and the, ups, uh, and the community operators are two repos to be able to, to find the operator hub IO and uh, also OpenShift. But yes, uh, it is installable, but not uh, by default. We need to change a few things. Okay, so there's the security context. And the other thing that, that we need to work out, uh, we have not tested it with uh, Cryo. And so it'll also be good to, uh, to get some feedback on whether you have any trouble with how it interacts with, uh, with Cryo. Um, but yeah, I think, Outside of those, outside of those couple areas, uh, yeah. If um, one of the things that I think would be a, a good idea to head towards would be the eventual inclusion of some of the OpenShift stuff into our into our CIs. And so when when that's much further along, let's have another conversation around that to try to work out if there's something we can uh, we can do there. Sure, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, it would be my pleasure, including OpenShift on that. Uh, whatever I, I can help, no problem. Fantastic. And uh, last question, I guess the, the last question on this is, uh, when, with all this particular uh, stuff that you were, that you're working on, are you the only person in Red Hat at this particular point, or do you have other uh, colleagues and friends that you're, that you're working with? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, we are seven now. Uh, there's one more coming to the team tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, we work exclusively with uh, operators, uh, doing a lot of stuff, uh, presentations, consulting, development. And on the NSM operator itself, it's only me for now. But uh, yeah, I think they are more than, than inclined to help uh, if you need help. And if I can put you guys on, on Operator Hub and OpenShift Hub and push the operator to another level, because we are classifying operators into levels, if I can bring the operator to level four, I can actually, I think I can, I can have a, a special channel on CoreOS uh, Slack just for the operator. And then you have access to the whole team to talk with them and, and, and everything else. That's, that's, that's the way we, we are working with, uh, with partners and clients. We have almost every one of you uh, on another project, on all, other projects, not just in the same, but other projects. We have Cisco, we have VMware, we have F5, we have a lot of Juniper. So everyone has uh, uh, a channel uh, with us. Uh, because we work directly with the partners and, and so on and so forth. And, and operators level level four are, and five are the most important to us. So we have uh, a lot of work to do yet on that to, to be there, but, but yeah. But we, we greatly there. appreciate the, uh, the help. Like it's, it's, it's fantastic. So um, like definitely let us know if you're ready to any problems as well. And we'll, we'll do our best to, to give you guidance or to unlock you. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. And thanks for the time too. Sure, my pleasure. Um, so I have one, uh, one last thing before we, uh, before we close up. Uh, and Nikolai, I'm going to post a uh, link over the chat. Um, so anyways, if you can open, if you can share and open that up, that'd be, uh, that'd be helpful. Uh, yeah, it's on the Zoom chat. 
Cool. If you can go to the second slide. Okay. So um, there's something that I would like to uh, start building, and I'm looking for someone to, to help with take, taking up a substantial portion of the of the code. Um, and so the idea is we, in order to help with the CNF efforts, the cognitive network functions that are being built, uh, eventually we're going to need uh, some form of a test hardness to help with the uh, certification path that they all want to head towards. So I want to build this very simple component. It's basically a test harness with a generate and capture and a monitor. Um, conceptually, it's very simple. The complexity uh, that starts to come up is in the types of things that we can generate and, uh, and capture and on the, on the payloads. But I wanted to start seeding this particular idea so that if anyone is interested in helping build such a thing, uh, get a get a hold of me, and we can start working out what a, what initial what an initial MVP would uh, would look like. And uh, so that was a, the last uh, the last announcement I wanted to to toss out. Uh, and in short, it just be start create a, a network surface that it exposes itself, connects to itself uh, with a CNF or group of CNFs in the in the chain and it monitors everything in the chain and looks for things that look uh, suspicious. And suppose that CNF was a firewall. On the capture side, you can check that this thing properly blocked the things that I asked it to or, or so on. So uh, just a short something of what, uh, of something that would be useful to build that uh, I would appreciate some, some help with. Um, with that, I don't have anything else. Is there any other small items that anyone would like to discuss before we close it up? Okay, if there's nothing else, then, um, yep, thank you everyone for, for attending, and we will see you all at the same time next week. Take care. See you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.